It had solid it had, looking. Or? Yeah, it had a cap that fit over it. This is where the 115 sat. That was a copper color. The cap was too. Or no, just the, the, no, the cap inside was inside. yeah, just the cone inside or the uh, the 115 inside. And then this tube, I guess, went to the. No, These this guys, because or? the reactor was removed and this tube just goes to the base. Oh, okay. What goes on the tube? Is that I think this is this gets into the the reactor portion. The um, the one fifteen sits in here and it's in a triangular shape, and the point of it sits level with this tube. And I think this is where the reactions taking place, where they. Uh, it really looks like a, a little accelerator where they're accelerating a proton, interacting it with here, and then uh, on the base here. Now, all this happens within two inches, which is fantastic. On the base here, there's some uh, thermionic generator, and uh, this is this is where they're converting the heat to electrical power, and and where it's producing as a byproduct the uh, gravity wave, which for some reason propagates to the skin of this device. But the uh, was the one fifteen a, a square based triangular shape or is it a tri complete no, just, triangular? Yeah, just like that a piece with ridges in it. Just a, a slice. Oh. And from what I understand. The way these are cut is they're the one fifteen comes in discs, like silver dollar science. Mm -hmm. They're stacked up. I don't know how they're attached together. This is put on a lathe and cur cut into a cone, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. with the cone they slice through it. And then those slices form these, so they have a little yeah, curve sure. on them. Yeah, it'd almost be like that. Exactly. As they go through. Exactly. Now, why yeah. this is done, I don't know. If it's just to cut in a triangle, why not take a piece and do this? Do uh, obviously, there's some reason they have to go through all that trouble. But that's what the ridges something are on them. Probably something about surface area, I think. I don't know. Is it heavy material? Yes. Yeah, you can tell it's strange. Just holding it with tongues, it's over heavy. Is it radioactive? Uh, supposedly it's an alpha emitter, but it, I mean, the piece that I had and I tested it, it was just, if it is, it's the uh, lowest level alpha particle emitter I've ever. You can you just let it run for hours and and uh, try and gauge it over background, it might be one or two counts uh, every 15 or 20 minutes above background, so it's, I don't know what... So what you're saying is that it's extremely safe. Yes. To work. Yeah. Now, all toxic heavy... Well, okay, of, all heavy metals are toxic. And, yeah, and machine, the machine, cutting, anything like that would generally be Generally, the heavier problem. they get, the more toxic they are, so I imagine it's highly toxic. Now, it may not be, but... I think following along standard lines of the, you know, the normal elements, I, I would imagine it's very toxic. I saw no oxide coating on it. It looked uh, Not a reactive, bright then. copper color. You know, it stayed that way. It's, right. it's relatively stable. Right. I mean, plutonium, for instance, I mean, it ignites on contact with air. It tarnishes instantaneously. Uranium, too. Um, you say it's copper color? Yeah, like a like burnished, that, like that over there, the beryllium color. Your pot under the phone there. Nah, beryllium's too gold. Uh, in this area, but brighter, right, right in here. So you like the left of your foot? Yeah, I. Toes. Yeah. Yeah, you that pretty close. That's an interesting material. I would say, <laughs> yeah. yeah, all the things you've talked about. That's I would really imagine they would, you know, after they lay these cones, whatever they take this scrap and recycle it to make more. Or? Some, uh, yeah, I'm sure they don't just throw it away. Um, 
you know, which makes me think um, that that they're making these discs, that they're melting the material and and then cutting them again. Did you ever see any physical properties listed for the material? Yeah, I, uh, melting point, a couple other things too. Uh, I wrote them down. Gene has them. I don't remember them off the top of my head. So this little incense burner, if you will, whatever you're sticking this in, is it basically the same color as the Element 115? No, that's the same color as everything else in the 115. Did you ever see the model that was made? Of the reactor? Yeah. I, I saw it once on the table in here. Oh, because there's when some... I came over, it was just the... There's some video on it. And I, that, yeah, uh, I, I think I have the video. Yeah, yeah, that, was, that was half scale. I had a friend build that. Make it out of metal, and it was very, very close to what it looked like. You still have it? The model? Uh, no, I don't. I have the video of it, though. I I have the video of it, I believe. That was very close. Well, looking up, you know, at the ceiling or whatever, is there a deck above the deck we're on, you know, with the chairs and the columns? Yes. And it goes yeah. up through that deck? Yeah. Now, that's where I believe. This is just a guess out of the clear blue sky. Should there be any navigating equipment or any other heavy electronic or pseudo-electronic equipment, that's where it is. Um, on the next step. Right. On that, because on the uh, on the ridges here, you see about three foot square black I don't know if they were windows, ports, or if they were just black areas. But certainly something is going on on that other level that, you know, of great interest that I didn't get to see. And they are square? Yeah. Are they rectangular? No, they're square. They're square. But they're black when you viewed it from the outside. Right. But, you know, there again, the only time I did see it is when it was outside and I was looking directly into the yeah, sun. Yeah, you know, when you, when you look at cars with the blackened windows, they look pretty black. But from the inside, you can look out. Yeah. And it's used the shade and keep sunlight out. And if you're traveling somewhere, with that intense radiation, it might be something that's really tight. Yeah, 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 and and at that, that, that time, the sun was directly behind it, too, so yeah. it really... Couldn't tell if there's any light inside. But How yeah. much headroom would you have, like, for that next to that ceiling in there? No, not much. Not much. Did in you fact, have a you hunch over in there? Or? Yeah, because you hit, oh, I think you have maybe 10 feet. Uh, you have about 6 feet at the center. Mm -hmm. uh, but in a 10 foot down yeah, every circle here, like a, you now you begin to hit. Yeah. yeah, now you begin <laughs> to hit the, the sides mm -hmm. of the wall. So six not the feet most comfortable. About. Yeah, approximately. I think we're dealing. It was with, taller than. It was just taller than me. We're dealing with 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 four foot characters. I mean, is that is that conceivable? I mean, you you well, certainly closer. certainly five foot is well, people with max. back problems. Yeah, no, there's no well, there's no way a five foot person could operate in there. Yeah, it was okay. it was certainly uncomfortable for me, and um, because I noticed as I walked, even in the center, I could feel my hair sticking up. There was a either some sort of static charge or something, you know, where you're constantly putting your hair down to stop from looking like an idiot or just a natural reaction. But I, I always, as I put my hand up on top of my head, I'd hit the wall or hit the ceiling rather. So it was did very you feel the hair on your hand stand up when you did that? And like when you run your hand across the front of a CRT? Uh, I don't, cool. I don't, I don't remember. Okay, I don't remember. But I know I was constantly doing that. Okay. Very From here, very what's close. Seat look like? <laughs> very close, but this, but the seat continues down. Oh, okay. It, it's not on a post. Right. Yeah. Okay. Almost like it was a sheet of rubber, and someone pushed it up from underneath, mm -hmm. like a vacuum form part. Yeah, like a vacuum form part. Yeah. Which, in fact, may be that would explain a lot how everything was made. Like it, it really looked like that. Like if there was some sort of mold, and they started out with a piece of metal, and then a vacuum form and sucked in these consoles, the seats and everything, and then there's, you know, the level, and then they 
Is that wonderful from a touring standpoint for a little kid? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess it is. <laughs> it's been beautiful. It's no wonder to clean up the it. areas too. I mean, you have all these things to reach under. And, you know, yeah, there's nothing to do if anyone was to build it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's perfect for cleaning, <laughs> keeping it clean. And these the sides would kind of you know like your typical sort of fifties fiberglass chairs. Did the sides actually come up around your thighs or whatever? Or, I mean. Was it a bucket sort of? Yeah, it was a bucket seat. To sit on it, you have to sit on the arm. Okay. But it was not padded. It it was. Of course, it wasn't metal either. It what it? Uh, well, maybe it was. Well, if you weighed thirty some pounds, you probably wouldn't need great padding. And if you were contained, perhaps in a force field within the ship, what? You I'm trying to remember a zero g condition. Yeah, what padding? Minimum you gravity. I guess I was trying try to remember if it flexed at all. There were any belts or harnesses? No. Or looks like uh, snaps if they were, to they put them there. Or... No. Is there any sign anywhere of liquids? Anything that dripped that caused a line? Was the floor textured? Was there any? Yeah, the floor was kind of interesting. How would I draw it? Lots of well. To open, let's get this oriented right. I think the door would be good. And right here, this is the access to the lower level. And, and it's pretty it's, close to the edge, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, very close to very the edge. Narrow in there. Yeah. Which is, that's why I only fit the top torso of my body in there because I had a lay in bend mm -hmm. and I could just see the amplifiers hanging upside down. Um, this pushes together if you had lots of at the Pentagon. <laughs> lots of hexagons together in, in a mesh. Mm -hmm. There's an opening here, an, an area that you can stick your hand in and push and all the hexagons collapse. You can push it and that's how you you can look down inside. And as long as you hold it, it'll stay. When you let it go, at a little hexa. How can I describe it without? So can you imagine that kind of a honeycomb type thing? Uh, kind of a think of a, a honeycomb made out of thin, like springy metal strips. A large okay. honeycomb, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it was about that thick and just so it's a great. Yeah, great, great, made like that. And if you pushed gotcha. in the corner, they would all kind of collapse into each other. It was kind of a neat. A okay. neat little door, and holding that open, you can look. And when you step out back up, while they return to their shape, they go pop, 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 pop. So you can walk on it; it would be strong in that respect. What's the dimension of the grate um, across the flats of that hex, for example? Two inches, something, Mr. Rough. Okay, so you could you could walk on it. Yeah, certainly walk on it because I stepped on it afterwards to see it if it would. But in in uh, a lateral force, it just pushed right open, which was I thought was really kind of trick. What was the dimension? Of it? Uh, about about two inches somewhere there. across the flats. Yeah, and there was a little handhold it looked like where you could just that had nothing in it where you could just stick your finger and push and it. What would you like say that. to the mention about the whole opening? Was? Uh, not very big because I just felt about this square because it pushed in on my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, mean it, it, I just uh, maybe seventeen inches. Maybe 16. 16. Yeah, for good. And it was regular. It was square, or was it was it rectangular? No, it was square. Two inch flat, so sixteen inch. Flat. Now the floor, aside from that, it's solid. Just solid, yeah. With There's without a texture, it's just this, the same gray stainless steel look. Mm -hmm. You'd slip if you were on it if it was wet. Yes. Yeah. Oh, certainly. Yeah, it was real shiny. Yeah, it had it had it more or less of a. You couldn't see yourself, but it was certainly mm -hmm. shiny. And it felt really substantial when you walked on I mean, it. Felt I didn't feel any flex, and I purposely stepped on this to flex it, but it it didn't. So it was pretty hefty strips of. When you on. when you move that, it, it, it compressed. Yeah, the hexagons collapsed in like that when you pushed it. Did it, did it collapse in a V from the sides, or did the whole thing just move? No, it collapsed in a V. It did collapse right, in. right from this point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So folded it. It looked like this. Did 
do you see that treatment anywhere else at all? No, but I thought about that for a long while after I left there. In fact, I think I came home and cut little strips of metal because I, uh, you know, what a good idea for a, a well, door of sorts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You just pop, pop, pop. But I couldn't get anything to do that. But uh, and, it, and at the same time, it's not really a door. I mean, not a not a concealing door because you can see through it. Right, but it, it just operated so easy. But it had to be something very springy, like phosphor bronze or something like that, uh, that would return to its shape. But you know, that takes too much force to. It's almost like pop. a like a, a feeler gauge for a car. Right, close close to that type of metal, or spring back easily. But was there was there elasticity. anything that gave any sign of? Conventional Earth logic relative to heating or air conditioning or air flow or gas flow and, and, and environmental things. It's just if if there was, it was concealed. It, who knows where could it be concealed? I keep blaming everything on the floor I didn't see. But if I went out there and you know didn't see anything, it would still make perfect sense because it, I don't know how you can conceal the reactor that stuff. wasn't. Cooled in any way that you reactor know. wasn't cooled. The re reactor was in operation under heavy load. I, there was no latent heat. There, I mean, that violates one of Newton's first law. There has to be heat somewhere, and it certainly wasn't there. Um, you know, I, I don't know. There was no, no cooling, no liquid, no bathroom, no, unless a lot was removed that I didn't see. But then. Because everything had that vacuum molded shape to, to it, in 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 one hundred percent perfect condition. Yeah, but a hundred percent perfect conversion of cannot a, in that conversion. can't happen yeah, anyway. No. Well, I mean, there can be ninety-eight point nine yeah, nine yeah, and yeah, nine. Yeah. That little extra nine is heat, and it should it should show up. But could it be dissipated in the skin somehow? If it's so thick. No, because I saw the reactor operated out oh, you know, okay. on a bench. Oh, okay. And, you know, it was. So you say this one was removed, this panel? Yeah. How could you tell it was removed? I mean, was there a difference? Like yeah, it looked like, well, yeah, you could see the edge, saw or? marks on the bottom, so it looked oh, like okay. it was, Okay. <laughs> you could tell where the human intervention was. It, it looked like someone took a chainsaw to the bottom. And it was like the, the chairs were just kind of grew yeah. out of the floor. Right, that's, yeah. yeah. Where that all took come from. What was the proton source? I don't know. And what was you know you say like it was chainsawed from the floor? Well, what was what were you seeing like a like a thin section of a wall? You know, like it was hollow. You know where it rose. No, up? it was solid. Solid metal. That was all solid. Huh? Yeah, which kind of makes you wonder what's in the box then. Yeah, you'd think they would have cut it up higher or something. Unless or they wouldn't have to go through all that. No, I didn't see because I knew the amplifiers are directly underneath here, and uh, I would have liked to have seen something interacting between. Yeah, yeah a hole even for a cable, or, anything, yeah. but uh, there was nothing at all. Hmm. Or even this this flexible line that came off of the top. You know, terminated Did it look like somewhere. it had been done recently? I mean, was it was there like little chunks of metal laying around? No, the, no, it was very spick and span in there. Did you get the feeling that the, that the craft was extremely reliable? Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, from, from what you're describing, it sounds <laughs> like to that me it that it's like just that. somebody just understood fully the. The, the chemistry, the, the, the radioactivity, the yeah, that's conversion. A, a ballet is a perfect way to describe it. There's nothing, there's nothing that gets too hot that needs a fan to cool off. You know, yeah. if there's extra heat here, it does, they do Fair. something with it. Yeah. Every single, there is no waste anywhere. It all works in perfect harmony. That's the impression I got, and I didn't see anything to deter me from thinking that way. Now you didn't see the ship go out doors and, and towed or pulled. I don't know if they started up and hovered it out or someone dragged. Would you it out. say then that this this particular amplifier wasn't operational because of that panel being gone, and you were only seeing like a two thirds power, somehow crippled vehicle? Yeah, possibly. No, you know I'd say no. I because of the way. 
the ring formed around there. It was it was equal around the perimeter. All the uh, amplifiers. Uh, I think there'd be some disturbance here. And the fact that on a bench test, when I saw the amplifier operating, it didn't have a box or console near it. I don't really know if it has anything to be specifically to do with the operation of it. So I don't think it was crippled. How many well, chairs did you see? Two. Two. On that level? Yeah. You never saw the upper level? They were right here. Yeah. Is there anything in front yeah, of it? Yeah, it makes a, it makes a face with eyebrows on it. That's how it looks. And then the chairs obviously don't swivel or anything. They're, they're no, stuck they're, facing... Right. Facing this way or facing this way? Facing this way. So the two operators would have a central focal point or right. something if they were sitting looking straight ahead. And there was nothing there on the wall that they would be. No, there was. At, right? There was something removed here. I don't know what it was, but this was definitely cut closer to the ground. But, but again, this sort of situation right. where it's solid. It wasn't that obvious. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I, I think there was something, something there at one time. And when I came in, this is where everyone was hanging out, right, right here and along the, the wall. Of course, you have this. Now, between the time you were in there, how many times did you get in there? Once, only once. And, and how long was it between that time? Was that after you saw it fly or before? Before. And about how? How much time between week, day, hours? I'd say a couple of weeks. Okay. So they evidently had time enough to retrofit this with everything they needed to do the flight test. From, yeah. from what you saw. You don't think it could have flown with what you saw? I don't know. I think it could have. I mean, let's assume that if it's alien, that they have a reason for everything. And that panel would have been needed if there was supposed to be a panel there. Right. This yeah, guy that the, uh, there was a point there. Uh, I don't know that it, it'll certainly operate with one amplifier working. So uh, I don't know. They'd at least need something to sit on. So yeah, maybe they had a retrofit something. In there. I wish I could relay that feeling to how it, how it is to look in there. I mean, it's. I can't. It's awesome. Well, we're gonna we're gonna go on the basis of the over the gray guys, and uh, work that way. In terms Certainly, of, something smaller than five feet. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Four or three and a half or four feet would be perfect. Three feet would be small. I can see something four feet running around. Four foot tall. Still, this space approaching the edge is useless. Mm. But then there's not a whole lot you have to pack in there anyway. I wonder what happens there. <laughs> when we say useless, I, I say to myself, if everything is really so so conservative in design and so interrelated, there must be something. That Even the empty stuck. space, I'm sure, has a function you know, in some way. Heat exchange or That's what acting as, as that they bought down plate there. condensers, or toroid, what, what do we got going there? Something right? like that. The tune pipe that's doing something is what's going on. <clears throat> Incredibly small amounts naturally occurring through Tony. I mean, almost amounts you can't even measure, but it does here and there occur naturally. But that's about it. I mean, there is nothing higher than that. Yeah. Of course, everything higher than that would decay back down to 
to go through a normal stable radioactive decay, and I just don't think there was enough bang Can in the solar system. Can it be synthesized by bombardment? It's impossible. It, it's impossible. They've been trying that for a long time. They just can't get anything to stick for very long, you know, above 106. I mean, even 106, 105, 104 is all, you know, are we really sure those two atoms were, you know, it's, it's all, you know, come on. Um, it seems like you'd have to shoot for something. I can't, I can't see how you could do it. Unless there's a, a completely different technique that I'm not familiar with. Yeah. Certainly not sitting a target in an accelerator and, you know, bombarding them with, you know, hydrogen nuclei you know, for months and months and months. Yeah, I know there were, there were programs that were going to set up huge fields to gather monopoles as they streak the food <laughs> us. <laughs> That was a and successful then, little thing. And yeah. they said, wait a minute, we can't have that much space for this. <laughs> Who's going to run out there and find right, the monopole those, that you caught? Yeah, those projects and like the, you know, the giant pools of water waiting for, waiting for proton decay and things like those are those, you know, big projects that just require lots of time. I can't see synthesizing an element like that many times. Yeah. Reasonable quantity. How do you feel about Dr. Teller at this point? I'll kill him. <laughs> if I see him, I'll kill him the next time I see him. You know, he's totally resisted. You know, I've had correspondence before I knew you or you before you even went on television. We had these correspondence going, and I think I sent you the letters. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I've, I, I've written to him. I said, all we need is that one sentence that says Bob Lazar is a liar. And signed by Dr. Keller. That would end all of this. It's not coming. Well, he's afraid, probably, that I have something else on him. I'm sure that's why he's taking that position. You know, he's thinking maybe he's got you know, taped me, he's doing something, or a recorded phone call, so he's kind of. <laughs> but, you know, what's his motive? What is his reason behind stonewalling everything? Well, pressure, I guess, from the government, perhaps. But still, he could. I don't know. I guess there's a lot that I don't know. But, uh, Have you had any contact from anybody, any, any the slightest anybody from EG and G, anybody that that you touched and talked with at one time? Has no. anybody ever come forward? There was a couple people that contacted George, supposedly the guy that drove the bus um, from Broome. To uh, S4, uh, one of the security guards out there, uh, who were, were out where the plane lands, and he was just, you know, after the special said, I worked at 51, yeah, I mean, this is my badge number, you can come and look at it. And I saw this guy getting off the plane, if that's worth anything. And, uh, you know, he didn't stay at 51 long, he drove somewhere else. But little support guys like that, but no one like, yeah, I worked with Bob and we did this, and you know, nothing like that. But just little acquaintances. Have you ever heard of gravity shields being worked on at Los Alamos? No. Well, you have now. Gravity shields. Huh? Uh -huh. Something called gravity shields. This is in a phone conversation that I got from this, this news source the other day. Oh, no, you talked to you for an hour and a half. Yeah, for an hour and a half. <laughs> it, was, That's it, was, an it was an interesting product. Oh, your gravity shield. Gravity shields. Yeah. That's what it was called. Earth could you possibly shield from gravity? Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just number one, what is gravity? Do we really know? I mean, did you ever find out what gravity really is? Particle, wave, what? I no, mean, we, we know a little bit about wave. Yeah, it's yeah. certainly a wave. It's not a particle. You know, it kind of goes to the light thing. Photons or waves or what? You know, what the hell? Well, it really, uh, it's certainly just a small amount I learned. Certainly, in my mind, tied the unified field theory together a little more than than what's known. It's certainly, I mean, gravity, time, and space are really one thing. I don't think there is any difference between them. You know, it's not it's not time, space, it's time, space, gravity. They're, they are all one. It's a that, single that substance. That reminds me, uh, 
any illustrations on this warpage of time space? Oh, definitely. For so, so, definitely, I Scientific American has been running some articles recently with all of these have distortions. They? Yeah, and the, the grids with the big humps and the twists. Oh, really? Yeah, I haven't. I haven't seen an issue of that for a while. Do we do we do a, yeah, a, a two disc. dimensional thing and, and bring it around this way, or, or how do you want to do it? Do you want a three dimensional would be would be better, but how? Because what you want to do is show a disc on the side, but then you kind of want to show the fab fabric of how would you show the fabric of space? Well, you can kind of show it as a sheet, but then pinching a part of that sheet and pulling it to the kind of a pseudo three-dimensional you don't you can't show space in three dimensions and show the craft having an active point on it you have to show it the space is flat the craft i know that's definite. that's the toughest thing about it because you you have to put it into a two-dimensional yeah you need an analogy it, in and your it's mind two-dimensional right there's no three-dimensional analogy of space time